Still good. Yeah, can you tell? Yeah. Uh, we'll see if they have a truly well out there. We're all going to run down the city. Hey, we've got anything at the same theory. Good afternoon, everybody. This is the meeting of the... Wait, that one's not on. It looks like we need... She was from Valley in the Bozilla. Hey, Valley. Hey, what's going on? Valley? That one doesn't move. Hey, you love them. I think, well, I don't think I can hear me. The graph. Good evening, everybody. I wonder if you could hear me out there. Who's that? Uh, this is the meeting of the Yarmouth Conservation Commission, uh, Thursday, September 19th, 2024. And um, Ken Paul Huggins, I'm the vice chair, and the very first time I've ever done this, so I want you all to be kind to me. Okay. Anyway. Um, anyway, this is the formal advice that as required by GL Chapter 330A, Sections 18 to 25, and pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, and active relatives extending state and COVID-19 measures that adopted during the state of emergency, signed into law on the 16th, 2021, as extended by Chapter 2 of the Act of 2023, the Yarmouth Conservation Commission will hold a public meeting at the date and time noted above. The public is welcome to attend either in person or via the alternative public access provided on the notice of meeting available on the town of the Yarmouth website. But having said that, though, um, I first want to take just a second here to introduce a new member of our commission, Bradford Bauer, who joined us tonight for his first meeting. We welcome him. Uh, I'm glad to see somebody uh, step forward and do this really interesting work. So thank you, Pat. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, okay, the first item to review is uh, SC 83-2431, a notice of intent, um, which will be the Great Island Lumors Associated. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to recuse myself. Okay, so. Uh, you hear me? Is this on? Or think you'll let us know if there's a problem. Okay, all right. And this is my, uh, yeah, that, that's right. perfect. All right. Um, my name is Leslie Fields with the Woods Hole Group. I'm working with Great Island Homeowners Association on this project. Also, Brian Wall, Attorney Wall, is here um, representing the Great Island Homeowners Association. Um, I'm just going to jump right in and pick up where we left off with the last meeting. Um, so, we um, heard from the commissioners that who had concerns over that southern section of the geotextile bags because we were really um, unable to maintain sand cover over that section of, of uh, geotextile bags. So we've come back with a new design for that area. Um, it's shown in the upper right-hand corner there, that cross-section. It is a fiber roll array. There are five fiber rolls, 24 inches in diameter. Um, we will take the sand out of the geotextile bags and use that sort of between the road and the first two fiber rolls, compact it there, and, and um, use it as a buffer between the edge of the road and the fiber roll. The fiber rolls will be anchored in place using steel cables and duck bill anchors. That's a typical way of anchoring them in place. And then um, once they're in place, then we'll cover them with sand, restore the dune, and plant it with beach grass. A um, little bit on a schedule and construction access and resource area impacts. So Great Island Homeowners Association is planning to do this work to replace the geotextiles with the fiber rolls this fall. Um, they do hope to be able to beneficially reuse some sediment that's being dredged from the Sweetwater Creek project. They'll use that for the sand cover on top of the fiber rolls. That is a project that has been permitted separately by, you know, the, the proponents of the dredging project, and they do have permission to bring the material from the dredging project, side of the dredging project, across the dune to Great Island Road. Right. So from there, then they'll place it in the pull-ups, and we'll use it to then place on top of the fiber rolls. And also on the, the, um, the end of that northern section of the geotextiles, where there, there needs to be a little bit of cover added to that as well. 
Um, construction access is uh, shown in that upper right-hand graph. It's really essentially the same as what we did with the geotextiles. So coming onto the beach from Great Island Road in that little red hatched area, and then working along, you know, from the beach to place the fiber rolls. Um, it, so it's, it's really identical to what we did before. Same with the resource area impacts. So the fiber roll array is 110 feet long. There will be impacts to 2,031 square feet of coastal dune and 2,047 square feet of coastal beach. Those impacts to the beach are primarily from construction access out on the seaward side of the fiber rolls. Um, and all those areas were really previously impacted when we installed the geotextiles. In terms of future work, we are asking for permission to be able to maintain sand cover over the fiber rolls and the geotextile bags to the north with up to 2,090 cubic yards of sediment um, twice annually. That would be compatible sediment with what's, you know, compatible with what's on the beach right now. We are um, proposing a monitoring program where that sand cover would be monitored by staff there at Great Island regularly. And then after storms, Woodsville Group will be out there monitoring and taking pictures. Um, if we see the need for more sand cover, we'll note that and we'll let the commission know about that. And if there's any damaged geotextile bags, we wanted you to know that um, those will be taken out and replaced with something similar to the fiber rolls. We're not going to put any new geotextile bags in there. And um, notices to the CONCOM will be provided before we do any of this work. So before we bring in any sand, before we take out any geotextiles, we're replacing with fiber rolls. I did want to spend a couple minutes addressing the comments in that mass DMF letter that you got that Brittany uh, brought up uh, last time. They had a number of comments or recommendations that you guys could include in your in your condition. And um, we are basically complying with all but two of those. I just wanted to go through those and just sort of explain that to you. So they were requesting a time of year restriction for all work on the beach from, I think, May 1st to July 31st. But we're really having a, a longer time of year restriction to protect the birds. So ours goes from um, um, April, yeah. April 1st, April, thank you, April 1st to, you know, September 1. So it's what we're definitely complying with that um, time of year restriction and then some mass DMF wanted. Um, we're also complying with the mass DEP's beach nourishment guidelines in that, you know, we're using beach compatible material to construct the dune. And um, we're monitoring and, you know, maintaining the, the project as it's been built. Um, we are, as I talked about, we are proposing to plant the dunes with beef grass. So we have a planting and restoration plan for those dunes. Let's skip to the bottom, too. We're also adhering to the, the comment that says there's going to be no equipment in the intertidal zone. We're not proposing any of that. It's all going to be above the high tide line. And we're going to make sure that when the contractors come, if they are proposing any sort of refueling on site, that they'll have containment materials there and supplies there in case there's a spill. So those are the ones we're complying with. The two in the middle having to do with pre- and post-construction eelgrass monitoring and modeling of cross-shore sediment transport. Um, the DMF comment letter indicated that this project that we're proposing is quite similar to one that the Commission saw back in 2021 which was the notice of intent for that larger beach nourishment project between Fox Point and White Cedar Point Road. And um, I think that the projects are really not similar at all. That was a project for 77,000 cubic yards of material to be placed on the dune and the beach, so much lower on the beach profile. And here we're proposing a map of about 4,100 cubic yards um, a year, all to be held in the dunes. So we don't think there's possibility of any sort of impact to the eelgrass. Um, the project that we're, you know, the north, the north section, this um, geotextiles at its closest is about 300 feet from the edge of the eelgrass that was mapped back in 2021 by the previous consultant. Um, so given that big distance and the fact that we're not putting down anywhere near the 77,000 that was um, that was proposed for that other project. 
you know, I think that those two conditions or those two comments should not be applied to this project. Um, this is just a list of sort of recommended conditions. I can just go through this briefly. Um, you know, we're offering visual monitoring of the sandbags in the private wall um, on a monthly basis, inspection after storms, with reports to the Conservation Commission along with photographs so that you can see, you know, what the site looks like. And we're, we're asking for authorization to keep those sandbags and fiber walls covered with sand. As I said, up to 2,090 cubic yards of beach compatible material twice annually, if necessary. If not necessary, we're not going to do it. Uh, as I said, we're going to notify the Conservation Commission in advance of any of this work. Uh, and we've got that time of year restriction for any work on the beach between March 1st and August 31st. And again, as I said, you know, if any of those geotextile bags become damaged, we're not going to replace them with geotextile. It's going to be the fiber wall array. Um, so that's really it for what we're proposing. I did want to spend just like five minutes with two last slides to address some comments that we heard from the commission last time we were here. That has to mainly with, you know, what we were hearing is that the commission was frustrated because Great Island Homeowners Association, um, I guess, hasn't been moving fast enough to help address these resiliency issues. There's a perception of that. Yes, yeah, exactly, a perception of it, yeah. Um, and I, I, hopefully we sort of dispel that perception or address that perception with this graphic right here. And what we did was we grouped the work into four different categories. So the blue dots on the left all have to do with that larger beach nourishment project between Fox Point and White Cedar Point Road. Okay, and so that those consultants started that work, I'm going to guess, at the beginning of 2021. They filed an application with MEPA in June of 2021. They were issued a certificate from MEPA saying they did not need to do an EIR in July of 2021. Then they filed a notice of intent with this committee or this board um, in October of 2022. It did receive a denial, then appealed it to DEP and received a superseding approval in July of 2023. At that point, um, the, the Great Island homeowners stakeholders felt that they really learned a lot by going through the process of MEPA and this notice of intent filing. One of the things they learned is that they really need to take a more holistic approach to finding a way to build resiliency for this, this road and access to their homes. Um, so not only do they need to look at, you know, how are they going to address erosion, like that Beach Nourishment Project was addressing erosion and, and damage to the roads because of erosion, but also flooding. And not just flooding from Nantucket Sound, but really flooding from Lewis Bay, so from the north. And that's one thing that we found is that that's really the more significant source of flooding, not from Nantucket Sound, but from Lewis Bay and the North. And so, you know, they, they just decided that they wanted to step back and take a more holistic approach to looking at the problem and building a plan for resiliency. So they hired Woods Hole Group in November of 2023. So now we're looking at the green dots off to the right. So that was, you know, 10 months ago. Um, they hired us and, um, uh, we, first of all, completed our vulnerability assessment in April of this year. And what that did was just looked at the roads and um, provided the stakeholders, you know, maps showing probabilities of flooding and when they can expect flooding. And what we were able to show them is that right now the roads are vulnerable to flooding during high tides and that that definitely gets worse as we move forward in time with sea level rise. So by the time they're at uh, 2030 and 2050, um, they're going to have impacts from flooding on that road daily. So we were able to demonstrate that to them. And then by May of this year, we presented a bunch of conceptual alternatives for addressing resiliency. And then we just issued the draft feasibility study to them in September and hope to be able to produce a final report in October. And amongst all that work on the feasibility study, we had the storm, the storms in December and January of last year. And we got the emergency certification, putting in the bags and trying to protect the road, and then following the status of intent. So there really has been quite a lot of activity 
Um, I think one of the things that the Allen Homeowners Association has learned through the through the course of our work is just how vulnerable really that road and access point is. They are committed to doing something because we've been able to demonstrate that it's a serious problem and it's it's coming soon. Um, they really have no choice, and they've, they've come to really understand that. That's been one of the benefits of doing the study, I think. Um, and then finally, just this last show, slide here gives you a glimpse of some of the recommendations that we make in the feasibility study. Um, this near-term solution is one that we talked about last time we were here at the meeting. And it's really, um, so for the next, say, one to five years. And so what that is, is essentially filing what we're calling a proactive notice of intent with this commission um, for emergency roadway protection as needed based on the dune erosion. So if we have dune erosion like we saw last winter in an area that, that has a dune right now that's protecting the road, then we're going to you know, have hopefully an order of conditions in place where we can come in and install this fiber roller system that you're seeing tonight for the, for the south section, cover it with sand and plant it with beach grass. Um, they would also stockpile some of these materials on site so they would be able to you know, implement these solutions right away and not have to worry about supply chain issues. Um, and so that particular near-term solution is intended to protect the road from damage caused by erosion until this mid- to long-term plan can be implemented. So we're guessing one to five years. And we're hoping to be able to file that notice of intent with this commission this fall. And then the other recommendations were uh, for mid- and long-term resiliency to raise sections of the road to four and a half feet in ABD 88 and rebuild the bridge. And then a second recommendation, which was also to relocate the road further landward and elevate sections of it to seven and a half feet in ABD 88 and also reconstruct the bridge. Um, the the solution that they select will probably be a combination of those two, you know, uh, mid and long term solutions. Um, but that's what we, we've presented them with, um, and they are and will be in the next coming months as a group selecting, you know, what what path they want to move forward on. Um, I'm going to remind the commission that it is a group of 43 homeowners. And it takes a while to, to make a decision, a collective decision. Um, everyone's got to contribute to the funding. The projects, either one of those mid to long term projects, are incredibly expensive, you know, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars. So they've got to figure out how to fund it, and everyone's got to be on board with it. Again, they're committed, and they have no other choice, and they know that. So they are going to make a decision. Um, once they make that decision about what to go forward with, then it's got to be designed and permitted and constructed. So we're estimating all that, everything on that road right there is about a five-year process before um, we can then sort of stop with this near-term um, sort of emergency road protection solution. So that's the plan moving forward. We wanted to sort of share a little bit of that with you so that you, you know, hopefully understand the difficulties and that they are moving forward and working together and, and committed to, to implementing some solutions here. Then I'll stop with that. Did you have anything to add? Oh, I don't have anything to add to that at this point. Very hey, thank you for the yeah. donation. Uh, tonight, what I'd like to do is uh, ask Brittany first for some of her thoughts, and then we're going to open up the discussion at the we can make Um. Sure. So, in the application, you had monthly, sorry, you had the monitoring for late fall and early spring, but in your presentation, you said it would be monthly, which is what I would recommend to the board if they decide to approve this, is monthly monitoring during the winter storm season, um, just so you get a better idea of what's going on, especially in our season of erosion. But the rest, the early spring, late fall, monthly in the winter would be what I would recommend. And I was wondering if you could define more clearly if there was a threshold that you had in mind for when would be the time if a bag was damaged, when would what's the threshold for damage that would re warrant re uh, replacement with the fiber rolls? 
Yeah, I mean, um, that's a good question. Um, and it's when the bag is deteriorated enough to where it's not holding any sort of sand and it's sort of compromising the other bags next to it or, um, you, you know, allowing damage to the road. So past the point of where some geotextile material has been lost to the ocean. Yes. Yes. So microplastics have already entered the ocean at the point where you're proposing to replace the bags with fiber bolts. Um, well, hopefully not. Yeah. I mean, that was one thing that we had said in the previous, uh, I think, presentation is that, you know, through this more frequent monitoring, and I agree with what you're suggesting as far as the more frequent monitoring, that, um, you know, if we see that it's starting to deteriorate, then we're going to, you know, we're going to move and we're going to remove it and we're going to uh, pick up any sort of geotextiles that have entered the beach and, and try to keep them out of the environment. Okay. And my next question is, since you're not proposing replacement with a similarly sized and shaped biodegradable material. Fiber rolls are sold in like 25 feet length, foot length. Mm -hmm. How are you proposing? So if there's two damaged bags, well, one damaged bag, what is the proposed? Can I, in the northern section? You mean? Yes, in the, in the section where you're not proposing to replace immediately. Yeah. Um, I think we have to work through that a little bit. So, you know, you can get them in 10 foot lengths. So um, I think that would be, you know, the length we'd be sort of aiming to be the smallest length we'd be able to, to work on. Um, is it not more resilient to replace in the longer sections or more robust if you have, is it not? If you do longer lengths? Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 So I think the threshold should be pretty low then. If the commission decides to approve this, if there's a damaged bag or two, that should initiate the full replacement for the fiber roll because that means the other bags are experiencing and have experienced the same amount of degradation or similar over time, uh, where I think that would be a good step. So we're not having segmented portions of that bag array being replaced at different rates where the fiber rolls would be installed at one time and have maintenance and monitoring from that. Yeah. Does that, what do you feel? Um, well, the other section is 810 feet long. And if we've got 25 foot length fiber rolls, I think that, you know, it's entirely possible that, you know, we could see damage, you know, at an end or something. And, and I think that we could replace, you know, maybe 25, 50, maybe 100 feet um, without having to replace the full section of geotextiles and um, still have it be effective. Okay. I would hope that we wouldn't have to replace the whole 810 feet with fiber rolls right away. If we see damage, you know, in two or three bags. I think we would need more. Once, obviously, if there's no damaged bags right now, I think we would need a more clearly defined plan outlining the next steps for sectioning that out and making a plan to section that out. Because, I don't know, maybe quarters, maybe fifth, maybe... But I think it should really be a substantial amount of that array be replaced at one time in order to get those geotextiles out of there as soon as if the commission decides to approve allowing them to stick. But I think that would be possible to submit later. A more, I was going to ask that. Okay, perfect. A more concrete plan on sectioning that out. And then scale it. That's all I had. Thanks. Now, mission, Amy, a couple of things. Um, yeah. First of all, I know that you guys came on after what I'm about to mention happened, but um, I think I want to be clear that part of my frustration, I won't speak for everybody else in the commission, is the time when somebody put it upon themselves to add the rocks and the, and the cubic yards of sand without any permission from us. And that was, I don't know if they even showed up on your chart, uh, of your timeline, but that's where my frustration comes from. And then here we are. I think I don't, I, wait, is that pre Colby? You did not see it? No, it wasn't pre Colby. You were I was here. It, it was on the, it was on the, at least when they put the sand down, maybe not the rock, rocks. That was like a early, late 2022. Okay. So, I mean, that's where my frustration comes from is, is somebody doing that without any commission? Uh, we left it there because we felt that getting having to take the locks up would do more damage than leaving them there. But I just want to make that clear. 
Um, I do agree with Brittany. I don't really want to see any plastic make its way into the ocean. Um, so I, I think well, and anytime we start, you start to see deterioration, we need to replace it um, right away. Um, it's, um, I think I had one more note. Um, you gave us, so I appreciate the fact you've given us uh, what, what could be a permanent solution. Um, and hope that that moves along. Um, and uh, I guess that's it for now. Maybe I'll come back. Hey, thank you. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say. Uh, I'm sorry, Pat. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to mention. I I read your uh, the Commonwealth the Mass on the um, Marine Fisheries Review, and it states very much that it's a this review was for a temporary situation. It said two years, right? I mean, it's already been almost a year. So this wasn't for for a long term solution. It was two years. It was a in, in the sun, they deal. And um, I read about how why they felt about the eel grass and the uh, study for the horseshoe crabs. I mean, it's, um, it's shoals or called horseshoe shoals. So they're very important out there in order to saying how, how delicate they are to being covered with any type of sediment. And with the amount of, uh, of things you want to put on, you know, twice a year for an indefinite period of five years, a lot of sand. And I think those two studies should be done before, uh, just as they recommended, before we decide on that. And that's the thing I thought. And also about the sand, um, how it's supposed to be modeled under the, um, the mass uh, DDP regulations. I mean, some of the sand that I see in the pictures doesn't look like the same color, even, of the sand on the beaches. So I don't know what, you know, with the sand you're getting from a dredging site, I, if that is also going to be under those um, regulations, if somebody is looking at it and making a decision that it's good sand to use. And some dredging materials aren't, aren't the best. Uh, you know, just looking for places to put it. I've seen that in other issues where we've had dredging materials, and what are we going to put it around here? But. Have the dredge materials been analyzed? Um, yes, they have. have. Yes. And so um, they have been found to be compatible with what's on the beach. Okay. Um, the material that we used before came from the upland. The material we used most recently to cover the te geotextiles came from the upland. Um, it did have a sort of a reddish color to it. That's common for material from the upland. It does bleach out over time, but in terms of its physical properties, so grain size and distribution of grain sizes, it was also compatible with what's on the beach now. I um, mean, a lot of that color has sort of uh, blended, you know, bleached out, or it, it is a lot more similar in color to what's on the beach right now. Um, one thing I'll say about the eelgrass, um, there was an eelgrass survey done by the previous consultants in 2021. Could be. Um, again, we don't feel at Woods Hole Group that the amount of material we're putting on the beach is anywhere near the 77,000 cubic yards for the bigger beach first but project where those conditions were required. Um, we don't think there's a risk of this material impacting that those eelgrass beds because of the, the distance between um, where we're working and the eelgrass that was mapped in 2021. Um, I think in terms of requiring us to go out and do an eelgrass survey now, we're almost at the end of the, the period in which we can do an eelgrass survey because it starts to senesce and you can't, we can't map it anymore until next, say, July, August time frame. And so on the, you know, if we have to do something like that before we replace these beds or do any work, in my opinion, we're looking at another year while we could do anything. And, um, Again, I, I just don't think that the scale of this project warrants um, mapping the eelgrass in that way, because I don't think there's going to be an impact from this project on those eelgrass beds. Well, that was written maybe 2024, 20, what they were saying. So they're saying maybe they had a different opinion. Good. It might be a good middle ground for the board to recommend that an eelgrass monitoring plan maybe once or twice during the life of, your, of this project would solidify that there are no impacts to the eel rats being found. Maybe the end of the fourth or fifth 
nourishment during the growing season um, and at the end of the project. Well, maybe just once, but that's something for the board to consider as well. Where my mind? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think um, you seem to be a pretty, pretty good plan. You are going to replace all the south area banks. Is that true? Correct. And uh, I think that uh, what they and others have said, I agree pretty much with the commission is being able to get data around with those statements and put them in the conditions. Um, I wish there were a different way of coming up with some kind of pressure for your 40 odd owners. But I don't, the price of the road is really somewhat small compared to some other things in life. Um, I think there are already no any other comments that have been, been covered. I, uh, yeah, I was just interested also in that eelgrass question that Pat brought up, and uh, sounds like my friend had probably a pretty good idea, however that might might come together. Um, at this time, is there anybody in the audience who would like to take the read to the piece question or have a comment? Everybody, anybody on Zoom? Do I see none? I guess we could make a, uh, you know, oh, what's the car? I can't tell what, is it, what a hand writing still like car? No, I'm sorry, I can't see the name. Bill? Shepherd? Holy? Bill? How do we acknowledge that? He's on it. Oh, okay. Oh, there you go. You unmute yourself, Cheryl. How oh, do we have done later? Uh, Cheryl? Good to you. Uh, sorry, you know, that was from when you started the meeting was still muted. So I'm sorry that it was still there. I think it just identify herself for the record, Blake. I think it's... Oh, she all said. I didn't hear that. Oh, I didn't hear you. Okay, thank you, Cheryl. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay, I guess we're all set. We need a, um, can we make a motion? I move to accept the plan with the special conditions you discussed, of wedding monitoring and no others, being grass. Yeah. What type, how, how often? In the tray. Um, monitoring monthly for the oh, and the yield grass monitoring. Yeah, that's me. And you can't do it till July, you said. So it would only be eligible in the summer monitoring. Um, so you can ask annually or after two years or at the end. Is it? Is I don't know what monitoring yield grass means. You know what what work it entails. Is that a lot of work? Transex snuggling. Oh, what? It's a considerable amount of work. It is, um, and especially if we're not putting that material down. I don't see. You know, we're asking for you know up to four thousand. So why don't we monitor it this in the summer of two thousand twenty-five, and then again in two thousand twenty-seven, two years later, to see if there's been a change. Just about it. Who's that? Cheryl, you're not muted. Cheryl, you're not muted. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that would be reasonable. Okay. Thank you. So the yield graphs will be marked as we have twenty twenty five and twenty seven. Okay, and that's acceptable. Yeah. Okay. And and it was a uh, uh, the other item having to do with um the replacement of the uh bag. The the more um detailed plan would be needed to be provided for a section's replacement. Provide that sort of after either. I caught perfect. Yeah. Okay. We need a second. Right. I thought about the, um, the modeling of the migration of the sand to the the shelf. I mean, excuse me, to the um, pusher crab area. That was one of the recommendations too. None of that. Th that modeling was recommended for impacts to eelgrass. Um, not so much for impacts to the horseshoe crabs. So the horseshoe crabs. That's how I read it. And I know this is a piece of paste. Horseshoe crabs are mitigated, or impacts of horseshoe crabs are mitigated by just not walking within the time of year when they're there. That's not what this said. It was saying if the sand covered the eggs, there was a problem. I read the, the um, review. Mm -hmm. So, time of year restrictions should be observed to protect sensitive stages of horseshoe crabs from sediment disposal. 
Beach fill could crush spawning. Even eggs, no nourishment or beach con- construction should take place from May 1 to July 31st. So implementing that time of year restriction would negate the impacts to the organism. They provided the planting plan, and then the survey was for the yield growth. And the modeling there is for impacts to yield grass. The bullet right there of Brittany's hand is. And we're going to actually measure it. Per the, per the, you know, per the condition that the board is getting ready to, for eel grass monitoring. And I think just one, I don't expect that you will find impacts for eel grass monitoring, but if you do find negative impacts, that some sort of management plan created to nullify those negative impacts over there. I don't think he had that. And there was like a, the other second thing, would it be um, possible to end that uh, an annual report come from the, the to us on the progress? So the monitoring, Region. yeah, so it's my understanding that the monitoring reports in late fall and early spring would have some detail in them. Um, and then the, by the presentation. Oh, you want them to return to the board? But are you talking about for the long term okay. solution? Right. This. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if we can require that. I, I yeah. think that. You gotta pay, yeah, let's look at looking for volunteers. They monitor if we end up saying what the progress is and we have questioned them short for me, will bring it to them. I don't see why we should make them come here. Like they they bill I want you're always welcome to, but I don't think we should make you. Okay, we, we have a motion, a long motion. Okay, do we vote? You have a second? Second. That that page for how you ready to read the motion back or anything like that? Well, that, like that. Do you understand the motion? I think I understand it, yeah. Yeah. I want to make sure everybody does. I all, all in favor of the motion, but yeah. I, I, most of the thing they need to. opposed? Yes, I am. Well, she said nay. Three one. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, pass the nay. So it. Three one. The motion passes. Yep. Well, that was easy. Okay. Was All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Much for your time. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Kid out of just in pocket. Hey. Um, okay, this is that. Sorry. David? Great. Okay, the next item is um, KT is a quest. We mend order of conditions. Get the set on them. That's the. 83-2379. Um, if it's been a request for continuation on this. Go on. We just need a motion to continue. It's October 3rd. So October 3rd. So moved. So moved, David. Admit you. Doc second. Doc second. In fact, all in favor, say aye. Aye. A vote. Carries four. Oh, are you in? You, you well done it. No, he's not in yet. Oh, yeah. He's definitely. Respectfully observing. I, okay. Good on that one. To that. They thought. You know, to send I didn't just put it up. Oh, okay. Are you trying to check you? Text me. Okay. Next is um yes, the continued request to amend order of conditions. That's the eighty three, twenty three, eighty six. Air for consulting for Joseph and the United I am Nelly, eighty grand. Eighty? Uh Mark Burgess, my short consulting, representing uh, their 
originally I, I and Ellie, but now the property belongs to Isuza, who were the they, the son and daughter. Just no worries. I work. Um, okay, so when we were here before, we had proposed a walkway and a patio and the mitigation to go with it. The uh, walkway was not well received, and uh, we heard you. So that has been eliminated from the revised plan. The elevation is updated accordingly, or three to one for the uh, new portion of the pervious deck area. Um, that's about the changes, really. Uh, we can see that the uh, revised planting list is pointing the letter that I, the revision letter. And uh, I mean, they say again, you have the revised plan, and the mitigation areas are in the letter as well. The um, pilots, Brittany asked to clarify the table. I hope I got that right. The table that's in the plan. Close. It's acceptable for now. Yeah, if. Just for to note in the future, if you have an existing, it's, it also would be included and proposed. And it'd be what? And so if you have an existing, you know, 319 square feet of deck, those are, those are there. You're still proposing 319. You're not, you're not putting what you're proposing to add. They're putting the total proposed. So for now, it's fine. But for the future, that's what ends up. Yeah. For existing, proposed, go to seeing it unchanged. That's what we're looking for. But this part is great. And uh, the, the new way that we're plotting these, so that I hope they come out a lot clearer because they were kind of blurry and washed out before. But hey, that's a drafting thing. Um, that's that's really it. We listened to you. We deleted the, the walkway. But they didn't want me to state, but the original reason for the walkway, I was told or misunderstood that it was to prevent sand from getting in the house. That's not a big deal. His mother is occasionally in a wheelchair, and he wanted a flat surface to get from that. In the patio to the dock landing, that landing area. Oh. So you can either cut the grass very short or you get ever. But you want to just want to leave it to make that clarification for you. Other than that, I, I'm, uh, I hope that we addressed everything and I'm uh, addressing any questions you might have. Oh, do you agree with anything else? Sir? Thank you for addressing the commission's questions. That's all. Thanks. You're welcome. Any questions from Ms. Glisha? Yeah. Yeah. Any, not any, any, uh, the only thing I would ask is, is there possible to put a bat to a pad that would help with the you know, chair? I asked him, I, I can ask you guys the percussion. I asked him about using a Moby mat. You know, you know, the yeah. Leg? yeah. That's not a structure, right? You could just roll, pretty roll that out in the summertime and just roll it back in the winter or whatever. Nobody would. I don't see how it would help on a hard surface, but if you wanted to do that, that's fine. It's hard ground. Those usually are just to solidify the sand. But that's what he wants. That's fine. Yeah. Well, if it rained and it was muddy, then that would help traverse the area. So hey, I, I did pose that idea with him. Yeah, we'll see. But I'm glad that you're acceptable for that option. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody else? Anybody in the audience? Anybody has Zoom? Okay, can I have a motion to what would it be to apply this project as with yeah, as proposed is fine. Ready? As proposed is fine. I need a yak. Second. Second David. Oliver Craven. I be very unanimously. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. So, welcome to Power. I bet we haven't met. You, you'll be seeing a fair, fair amount of me soon. Forward to working with you. Thank you. Okay, next, request to amend order of conditions. That's the 83 that 2303. Hey, like, how are you? Good day, name is Chairman of this Vice Chairman. Uh, members, for the record, my name is Kieran Healy. I'm a land surveyor with the BSCV. We're here for an amended order of conditions at 40 Mayflower Terrace. Um, the work that was proposed was completed, and there were a couple of items out there that, uh, after walking the site with um, Brittany, she felt that we should file an amended order of conditions. 
Uh, one of the biggest things is that at the side of the driveway, we are proposing a drainage structure. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Um, there was one off from the driveway that is going straight down towards the um, the river. So we are um, looking to bring a catch basin, capture any water that we run off that particular driveway. Um, there is also a stairway. To, excuse me. There was also a stairway that was on the side of the building by the construction that they removed to uh, get a machine in there to do the grading at the back of the site. So we're looking to replace that stairway. It was there. This is kind of a almost the same location, but not quite the same location. So that's one of the reasons for the amended order conditions. Um, on the uh, north side of the building, there is a retaining wall that exists now um, that was not permanent. We're looking to confirm that wall. And then there was small evidence of um, erosion on the top of that wall. So when I met with Brittany out there, we came up with a solution as to putting a small wall on top of that. So um, it would reduce any chance of any further erosion in that area. Um, because it has changed, we originally had one-to-one mitigation out here. Because of these changes, we've increased it to 1.5 to 1 for mitigation. So um, that and those plants have been uh, the quantity of plants has been increased on the face of the plan. Um, other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Just one other thing, the, uh, the proposed dock is um, almost true 91. You're not fully there yet, but down to one last portion with 91. So we hope to be starting the construction on the dock shortly, but it's not part of this. It had its own separate notice intent. But as you can see, the proposed location is on the plan, just so everybody knows that we're, we're on the way. With the permitting and almost finished with the permitting on your dock. Yeah, so thank you. Other than that, I'd be glad to answer your questions. Hey, Brendan, do you have any? Um, sure, some. Um, I did I did walk the site with caring, which was greatly appreciated. Um, on the original approved plan, the mitigation that was provided and approved was two to one. The, Wait, one. On the approved plans, it says two to one. Um, but the disturbance, the increased mitigation that you would be offering was would be for the excavation of the yard and the additional structures or just the new structures? I tried to incorporate both the work that was done and the work that was previously powered and the work that was done now and, and come up with a new square footage for everything. Okay. That's, that's what you have as a new square footage for everything. I was under the impression that the original plan was approved at two to one, but um, either way, I think there's, like you said, there's a lot of erosion in the yard. Implementing this drainage, do you think that would eliminate the erosion on the site as it is right now? The backyard has no vegetation. I mean, there's weeds, but the, the soil is loose. Uh, yeah, they're getting ready to pick their plant, and they're just waiting for this so that they can go back in, get everything squared away at one time. So, Are they blanketing and seeding the slope here? Are they hydro seeding or what kind of? plan that they have for that? They plan on seeding. I'm not sure if it's hydro seeding and seeding, but they do plan on, I don't even know it's rolled out grass, I uh, just think, but they do plan on getting that stable as quickly as they can. Okay. You know, they, they just wanted to get, because they've got to put in a machine to dig out the uh, catch yeah. basin, I think they were just waiting until all the machine work was done before they started planting. Yeah, that silk fence is working hard, collecting a lot. Corrosion sediment, eroded sediment. Um, if you're saying the original was approved one to one, I mean, I can I can try and pull the the first one up, but that was my only comment. Why would you decrease it if you're increasing it? That is, board can we try that while you guys just. Good. This is the original proof plan. It's size two to one. Great. Well, I guess I'm going to be increasing the mitigation at two to one, and that was an error by me. For some reason, I was looking at one to one, and it was in my head. But um, but we gladly increase that to two to one to be consistent. That would that would only be my request to be consistent with the original approved ratio. Um, other than that, and the, sorry, one more question. 
Um, are you completely planting shrubs under the second wall to stabilize? Well, just um, you think either would work? We hadn't really discussed it. It was. I think it's going to be a case of when the wall is complete to see what's what's happening there. The area between the two walls is going to be about two feet wide, so it's mm. not going to be substantial. There was going to be a little bit of area there, so we could they, we could plant that, and uh, as it's within the fifty foot, we use there some long mitigation. Mm. So obviously, we need a lot more. If we got to increase another twenty five percent of that area right there. Okay. So, oh, Andrew. Yes, sir. There you are. You are. The more clear about the mitigation, which is going to be entry to the one. There. So, can we uh, leave this with the idea that uh, you put on Diane? Yes. You can leave that. That's what I would recommend. Was I have no question? Okay. Anybody else? I have no question. Suck that. That? No. 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 Or I could get the um, in last thing, just get this can for it sign that one? No. no. Okay. Can you sign this? You can sign this one. Your first vote. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, anybody from the audience at all? Okay. Okay. Yeah, but most of the uh, in the plan, uh, let's see. Yeah. Is that it? You'll call me that a little. We'll move that out. Second. The Bradford is in. Huh? So they get to make that. I get it all in favor. And I vote. Yeah. Thank you, members. Look. Thank you. Hey, Stephen. Who seconded that motion? And that's it. Right. This. Yeah. Okay. I fought, I fought. Okay. Okay. This one get the sign. It that's his note, okay. Um by Glenwood Street. And have it numbered on it. We have not received a DEP number yet for the project, so we can't vote on it too. Okay. If I could open you up for discussion and make presentation and then we'll wait on the um uh, DEP now. <laughs> Again, for the like of my name is Kia and Evie from the BSC group, representing the owners of the property, Ivan and Gene Lacko. Um, we have been in contact with this project in the past, and we had received approval for um, some sand disposal in front of the wall, between the wall and the, and the ocean. Um, that sand was eroded pretty quickly, and uh, the area behind the wall was also washed out. So what we are looking to do is to uh, raise the wall by three feet, to um, protect the property and to put in sand at the back of the wall on the landward side of the wall and then uh, plant beach grass on that sand area to stabilize the whole, the whole area. Um, we're proposing a, a traditional wall further in towards the house and uh, we're hoping to bring up the, basically the whole area and uh, we uh, reduce the risk of flooding. Um, but the primary job here is the uh, raising of the seaward facing wall by sweeping. The disturbance will be on top, basically, of the existing wall um, and the area right behind it where the current erosion is happening. Uh, we're also planning to uh, repair and chink the existing wall. There are a few areas where it's being damaged, so it's a, it's a new stone wall, so we're looking to um, just fill in those gaps where erosion can further happen. Um, other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Okay. I have a couple of questions. Um, when you're saying wall, um, do you mean increasing the height of the existing revetment? Yes, revetment wall. Yes, revetment wall. Just to be sure. Um, the other portion of this project is that you have a wall here on the landward side, <laughs> and we're in the velocity flood zone. Um, and our new regulations don't allow any structures within the velocity zone. Um, so, what is the purpose of filling this area? The structure itself is outside the velocity zone, still in the regular flood zone. Um, but this is just a, the yard, right? So why are we trying to prevent flooding in this portion of 
to prevent the, if water comes over the wall, that it won't come. They know we have a slope that goes right down towards the house. And the reason for it is just to level out the area. So if any water tops over the house, sorry, if any water tops over the revised revetment wall, um, then it's not going to drain straight down towards the house. That's to do is just put in a flat area there. So if anything tops over, it will settle in that sand as opposed to it floods straight back to the stars. And what if without the wall, without the back wall, would it would it provide the same function? Um it wouldn't work as well. Um to say it wouldn't work at all, I, I don't I think it would work in some way. Um just being able to stabilize the edge of the sand and keep that area relatively flat is what we're trying to achieve. If we don't have a wall there, then we're going to need to have a slope at the back of the wall and slope it down towards the building, which is what we're trying to avoid. So under um, under our current regulations, this would require a variance. We don't allow new structures, which the stairs and wall would be new structure in the velocity. Um, so if you were just to repair and rechink the revetment and increase the elevation, you'd still need to add some material behind it to support the wall. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, definitely. Were these the new cobbles near the tight gate? Or are they existing? No, those are the existing ones. Go for them. Yeah, those are those are all my comments, but um this does require a variance and I would I would recommend not allowing a new structure in the velocity flood zone. Um and the fill is generally avoided in the velocity zone, except for dune or beach nourishment. And since this is above a revetment, it wouldn't really be dune or beach nourishment. Um, to, I recognize that you would need a certain amount to support raising the elevation of the revetment um, to provide support for that structure. But anything additional, I think, would be also stretching our current regulations for the velocity flood zone. Those are all my questions. Okay, so you said that. That the yeah, variance would be required. Could you repeat that for for this for this back wall and the stairs there because they're both located within the velocity flood. Okay. I hope you said something about. Did you say stretching the regulation? So fill um, should generally be avoided in the velocity zone, um, but some would be required to elevate the existing revetment. The rest of it proposed for a flood attenuation in this yard would not be consistent with our current regulations. And you said that from the wall, I didn't go out there, I'm sorry, but um, it, the, the slope goes down towards the house and the wall? Yes, if you um, if you look at the section that's on the top left of the sheets, oh, if you could put it up there. Yeah. Oh, you can see the existing ground right there is... Yeah. So the, the reason for the proposed grade was so that we would, um, if the, there was any wash over the wall, that it wouldn't drain towards the house. There is a low spot, and it does go back up towards the house again. But um, depending on how that floods, that was that's the reason for this flat area, if you will, is to stop the the water going straight towards the house. Okay. All right. Thank you. There. Yeah. Um, why sand and not some plantings? Um, it seems to me that. First time you have a wash over, all that sand is going to make its way someplace. Leave me out to replace it. Yeah, you have proposed sand filled beach grass area. So the majority of the the majority of it is sand is uh, beach grass. And when I was out there, I got the feeling where it says existing sand recreational beach. There's quite a large area. I mean, you know, what's there today is that uh, yes, we're cutting that in half basically by planting on the left and the right here. So the, the current the current area is very little beach grass. So that uh, hatched area is all uh, sand filled with beach grass on top of it. So we're reducing the overall area by about fifty percent. The other cross hills is right now the the hand, if you will, that's where the that's currently sandy, mm -hmm. and that would be sand with beach grass. Is what we're proposing. But the middle still would be sand. Okay, well, Mark, 
question still stands. I mean, that sand still has to go somewhere if, if it's flooded, which it will be. With the, with the area being flat and the beach grass adjacent to the wall, there's going to be a lot less water coming over the top. Not the still amount of sand water coming over the top, but it will be less destructive because of the beach grass is there. And by adding three feet to the wall, to reduce the amount of water comes over. Okay. That's all I have. That's it. I don't think I have any additional comments for what it's already been said. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, I think we're in a situation where we're trying to do something to get over the hump to the next five or ten years and we really should be planning for the next 50 but can't do really do much about that at this point. Um, and by that I mean yeah, you know, raising walls a lot more than what we're even talking this place could be gone in a really big storm. So I if you have enough um I think that Control your own anxieties about possibility of large storms coming. It's great. Um, so I, I really don't have any. Well, the one thing I would suggest is probably more beach grass area, like you're saying, because even with that one little portion, if any waves get in there, they're going to disperse and spread out and just wipe up deep grass that you have there. So, I don't know if there's a solution about that, except for putting all beef grass in, except for the path. Okay, thank you. That? I kind of agree with them. I'm pretty in the fact that we just made these new regulations about putting walls in a velocity zone. It's, it's a velocity zone. And, um, well, it's a beautiful spot, actually. And I understand wanting to protect it, but I, I don't know. Just keep building moss even higher. I, 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 I just, it's going, to, it's going to direct the water around these walls to other, to other areas. And I'm, I just don't see, see how we can just keep um, paying no attention to what we do. We just decided that the last regulations. They're not putting any walls in the velocity zone. And I think the plantings and, um, would help in, and fixing the original wall up, you know, kind of protect, it adds some protection to the area. But the increase in, in the size of the walls and the walls in the back, I don't, I just don't see how we can allow that. I, no, I'm going to say, I do, so you know where I'm coming from. I a question about, you said something about the three-foot increase in the wall along the, um, the um, existing wall in the front. Yes. So you raise it up three feet, and then the water still goes over in a storm, right? It still washes through that big area. Yep. It's still heading downhill. I wish you get some kind of variance to increase the wall contained on the other side, right? Correct. And it's still going to wash through. And it's still going to wash through, but there will be a few things. One is that by raising the wall between feet, they expect to reduce the amount of water that's going to top yeah. substantially. That's good. The primary focus of this is to raise that particular one. Um, yeah. So the last question, would the tide gate do anything to take that water out? Well, it will there be. By having the, the secondary wall, if you will, um, near the house, that's going really to you can see by the grading that we're developing the water towards the tide gate. So if it does splash over, it's going to go in that direction. Would it still go that direction now? Because that's where the lowest point in the yard is? Okay, let's suggest you need to... That's where not. Okay. And if you think about putting that rock in, we're right? rechinking that because that helps the return. Like, don't... That is proposed. Maintenance of the wall. Oh, that let me turn down. I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. I was saying that when you 
put in uh, stone, small stones at uh, birds that don't need to get returned water out of the yard. That's true. So, what are, are we disallowing the chinke? We haven't discussed the chinke. One wall at a time, I guess. <laughs> so, would it? So, your is it feasible to? Increase the elevation of the row at mid and still bring some fill on the side and have a gentler slope toward the existing lobe they are. Would that be enough? I guess you'd have to figure out how much you need horizontally in order to support a revetment of that size, but I think that's what the board is leaning toward eliminating that back wall and stairs. Um, I guess as we don't have a DEP member, and let me go back to my client and see. Um, and we let me look at this. I mean, if there are changes to be made to the plan, I'll have them in before the next Friday. And if we don't, if he wants to go forward with this, I'll come back and the DP number will be issued by then. Uh, we can discuss it further. Okay. Uh, that's fine. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any comments from the audit position? Do we have to identify yourself for the rest of it? Yeah. Excuse me. My name is John Backer. I'm at uh, 7 Lundwood Street. To the next door to this. I came in favor of this. I still am in favor of it. You guys are curious about where that wall is. Like, wall in state. Which wall? This one. It, it is the head crack in the house. You have the sand area. Yeah. So this is the wall of the talk. The house and you know, the that only wall did yeah, it would be dust enough. But it's an interlocking wall. Good quite patient is fish pack that is I mean hip. Ten so tour tie into the sea system of Bianca, I saw him. Killed it. I will. This is what he wants. But I put the yes, wasn't aware of this. I'm still okay. I think I could. Acros, I've known him. I've been in him 25 years. And uh, I think they've been in this property for about 15. And they absolutely do everything in a real perspective. Uh, the house is a beautiful thing. I maintain it. You say it the name of <coughs> I is effective for them. I get they lay out of them. Ah, uh, for something. No. Good evening. Oh. How was I doing? Can you identify yourself, Bree? Yes. Uh, hi, my name is Chris Lubazzi. Um, I am a 22 Park out. And I was asked by the Highest Flex Civic Association to review the submission as I previously served on the Yamaha Conservation Commission and I work in the Coastal and Garnethal field. And I apologize. That you're staring at um, a lovely scene of of stormier days here. Um, the goal of my review was to ensure that there were no adverse impacts to the already existing flooding concerns at the end of Glenwood. Um, so I wanted to just uh, kind of capture what I um, reviewed on this plan and see the concerns that we have. So overall, the plan states it's not for construction for permitting only. But there are several important designations we're missing, including no notations of types of wetland resource areas, existing vegetative areas and species, with slopes indicated for the redacting size or type of material being used, and where materials would be resourced from. And working on the assumption that the area defined as the sand recreational beach and closed sand fill areas are being defined as land subject to coastal storm flow as the documentation only notes that the coastal zone does not exist on this lot, but the coastal bank is only located adjacent to the existing revetment. 
Also, the plan submission included in the format in the, the, the house is at AE12. However, the plan itself refers to VE elevation at 13. And I couldn't find a LOMAR, uh, a letter of map or vision for this area. So it'd be helpful to get some confirmation of the plans and the figures of the plan doesn't agree with the format that was provided. For the revetment wall, the plan calls to increase the existing revetment to three feet in elevation. Understandable for owners like to protect their structure. The concerns are as follows. How is the elevation going to be achieved? Will stones be stacked on top of the existing revetment cap? Will this make the wall much deeper and the stairs plus easier to accommodate the steep end? Or will there be a new engineered slope proposed as with the increased height? Either the slots, the size of the material being brought in, or the stair rubbing were indicated on the plan. Also, the plan calls for re chipping as needed. The plan does not indicate the amount of chipping being just what still will be used. Um, and if we have what was done in the past, then the quarries and most likely the stones will get thrown out. Cobble offers more stability with a higher price. And what is the minimum size of the stone? I think we all know on the board and in the industry that chicken sound reduces the ability of a revetment to break down wave energy, which will cause more water to potentially overtop the new make structures that the wall is looking to um, cheat. If the wall doesn't have void, the revetment will act more like a ramp to the water rather than um, reducing the water intrusion. With the velocity zone being 13 or 12, according to the FEMA maps, the plan is only calling for 11 foot elevation or uh, up to 11 feet. This means they'll still be used to get again wave over topping and that only uh, that three feet of water overflowing the post. I'm wondering what model was done to make sure this need to be closed three foot height is appropriate rather than going with project. For the lock wall, I think most people have already commented on that, but the foot wall path runway away runs parallel to the water. 35 feet of the 50 proposed foot wall run is within the 50 feet and where new hard structure is not allowed. I'm assuming the, the lock wall is to capture the water that overflows the newly elevated revetment, but it's curious that the plan is also calling for an existing four to five the uh, recreational beach area to be graded at the same exact height as both walls, which would create a completely flat surface for water to travel towards the dwelling, which is not the purpose of the project. Plants would also note that the sand being provided will be compatible with existing material, and the material will come from an um, approved uploaded source. If you're keeping the area flat, you would rather need to, uh, um, you could chill your slope rather than bringing in 400 cubic yards of additional material. For water drainage, the plan refers to improvements in the stormwater maintenance management of the site. However, with placement of the lock wall, more water will be directed to the western boundary, aka Glenwood Street. There are currently concerns about flooding at the low end of the southern end of Glenwood, with some suspicions that the water flows currently under the flood plain or through it, as seen by the sand deposits on the road adjacent to the gate. This area I wanted the Conservation Commission to know is currently under review by the Yarmouth Department of Public Works for solutions to existing flooding concerns. And I would suggest that DPW be consulted on this project to ensure that their review and current planning of Glenwood incorporates changes that are being suggested for this abutting pump. For vegetation, uh, the plan refers to an enhancement of the vegetated areas. Then don't see a reference to a planted plan. Looking at the plan, there is a sole basin that's suggested. I'm assuming beach grass is a mopola. Having a variety of appropriate vegetation will occur a strong, will it serve a stronger and more stable recreational area for the owner. It's also near conducive to a wetland mitigation, the first five species recommendation. And it's significant when more vegetation as, as one of the, um, one of the members just suggested as a pathway would do much better to protecting the dwelling than just keeping it all stand. Lastly, um, this stairwell to the home structure leading from the lock wall is understandable if the proposal would for the, you know, currently not committed lock at all to be proposed. However, I would strongly suggest that the stairs not be located in a same exact pathway as the stairs for the revetment, as it means that the seam of this conduct in water. And I would want the order to know that we'd love to have a, a 
the agri the stairway system to reduce the water intrusion. But I feel the end of the creation of well we have honor deserves a more detailed and a thoughtful plan. Okay, thank you. Well, thank you. Can there be um recurring Yes. Oh, there's some of those items. Good. I, I'm going to jump in first. Yeah. Um, it, I think that the person obviously is um, well versed in this type of thing, and I'm sure she will um, be interested in attending the um, the uh, next meeting when we discuss the new plan. Yeah. And I would suggest that um, we get a copy of what she's talking about. If you'd like to put anything in writing and submit it to Brittany, and maybe it would be helpful to uh, the whole project that would be one. And know who she represents. I mean, know who she is. Know who she represents, yeah. But still, hi, and it's. Unity Park City. Yeah, she, she, yeah. okay. Hey, Quinn, there. She did that part, I think. And so was the only moment. Maybe she could come in to the next meeting. Just to um, paper your expectations, Chris, a lot of the things you're asking for are beyond the scope of our site plan requirements because we don't require construction plans. Um, I would say a couple of things that you pointed out, especially are of interest to the board, such as um, the plan for the stairs when you increase the wall on the ocean side um, and the slope of the revetment, which is sort of provided in this drawing, but just having those out there um, and any plans for repair of the floodgate. Um, but a lot of what you're asking is a little bit of an excess of what our site plan requirements are. So a lot of your questions will not be able to be required to be answered. Um, but thank you for your detailed comments, and we appreciate it. Okay. Well, oh. I think we're going for continuance. Yeah, we need a motion for continuance. Okay, the motion to continue. Very well. Yeah. Plus second. Click and David. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Say all. Very unanimously. I can be done simulation. Ten thirty to make the pie. So this is NASA. Okay, next item is uh, SD eighty three T four four seven. You know, okay, then Pinieri, the Scott and Ian, seventy five Mass F. Well, it's elevating and the thing dwelling. The kind of land so to this down dwelling. Thank you. Good evening. For the record, Danny Gonzalez, professional engineer with Down Cape Engineering, here on behalf of Scott McKeon and his project at 75 Massachusetts Ave. Um, there are two existing dwellings on this property. Right now, we're proposing just work on the front dwelling. We're going to lift that up, put a new flood zone compliant foundation under it as well as expand some um, deck areas in the front and back of it. The are in land subject to coastal stone forage, uh, a few in elevation 11. So the new foundation will meet all the requirements, and we are not proposing any fill at this time. All right. Happy to answer any questions that you have. Hey. Nick? The only thing that I had is that um, to make sure to, obviously it's required, but funding's in the foundation, it's in foundation plan by others, but we probably will just add that as a special condition given it's in the floodplain. Um, any curious as to why they're choosing only to do one of the two dwellings? I I don't know for sure, but I suspect it's just kind of a financial um, phase, cop phasing. I'm just curious, did we, did we have something on this block that we used ago? Oh, is it I am unable to answer that question. <laughs> so I'll answer it. Yes, there was an order of conditions issued to raise both of these dwellings. Good. And we will close that out prior to, you know, starting construction on this. Good, good that I can remember that. Nice hey, statement. I'm impressed with myself. <laughs> Play. Nothing else, Brittany? What? David? What? No. Herbert? Um, you, I see there's the proposed porch and the proposed deck. Um, both look like they're being expanded um, from what was originally there. I have not even asked to you know, it, um, how much expansion, but I was just wondering if there's any concern about those additional footprints 
you'd be on the clips here of the house. So this is, this is just the floodplain, um, and the whole lot is developed. They're they're replacing lawn right now. Um, so in general, um, when usually with projects that they're increasing the foundation, there's a lot of fill, and that's what we're most concerned about. That's why we require plantings and stormwater um, evaluations. But since they're using stairs, which we greatly appreciate instead of fill, um, you don't have mitigation requirements for an increase in footprint in, if it's just in the flood zone. Okay. There's also no trees or anything present. Um, if there are a few trees present in a flood zone property, we wouldn't re- ask that they replace trees that they're taking down for additional footprint, but they're not. So in this case, it's okay. Thank you. Yeah, Katie, just to include the flood, flood events. <laughs> we back. No, and it's good. Somebody in the audience? Anything on Zoom? Okay, could I have a motion to um, approve this project with uh, the condition of including the bent leg? Is that correct? Okay. I'll go. Jack? No second. Could I can pat? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hold. Tap to the Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I'll try and put quick projects first next time. Sorry. And very involved. Sometimes it's tough. The usual, like the right man, very easily. I can't do it on this dish here. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Then you might give it. Okay. Next, we have the certificates of compliance. That's the A32104, working in 20 King Ferry Way. And so they've requested a continuum. So that one has requested a continuum. Okay. So it's definitely continuous. We can have a mostly continue that. So moved. I uh, moved David. Second. And by Jack, you know, can I think all up Bradford? Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor of the continuum? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Passed by the requisite majority there. Okay. Second one is um, SC 83 29 Um, Okay, stay on this. This one is all set. All set. Okay, can I have a motion to um, issue a technical of compliance? Motion. Is that Brad? Brad? <laughs> Second. That's in Pat. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Get you sound of having the tap. Good. Pull the way the lot. What? We have to sign out with it, right? Yes. Please. This is too much fun. <laughs> I'll admit that it's just the right one. I need to request circle. Uh, in a, okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, I'll come back to you. I'm getting me why look like a lot um, continuous stormwater application. Um, this has completed the peer review process and is all set. All set? We don't have to do anything on it? It's good to be issued the stormwater permit. The stormwater, so you can vote on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, we want to issue a stormwater permit on 770-28. So moved. I'll move back at Back in Bradford. Oh. Jack. <laughs> Got to split those two up. Yeah, that was Jack. Did I get the right one? No. Yeah, I think I Oh, Jack did. Okay. They all found the same on that. Let's put it out. Okay, do that. Mm. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all? Actually, you nailed this way. Well, you signed that for Bradford's sake. Um, we administer the stormwater management or the stormwater management bylaw. Since some of us are engineers, we are allowed to hire outside consultants to review all of the engineering and calculations that they provide for a stormwater management permit. Um, so we basically just wait until that process is complete and issue that. Um, we review plans, but not the calculations because none of us are qualified to do that. So that's what that was. Take it. Thank you. And that one does also need signatures. Please. Yeah, Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. But to keep that on. No, I think it really does. I'll eat. Just there. Just there. Don't say that. 
um, is an enforcement. There you go. On SD 83-2148, Great Island Ocean Club, Howard Lane, you're entertaining a violation of special conditions for any of you speak to. Yes. Um, so this was um, reported by a neighbor, um, and there was an order of conditions issued in 2017, I believe, um, SC 83-2148, for the re the re um, paving and expanding of the Powers Lane Road Lane, the Great, I- Great Island Ocean Club. Um, two of the conditions in that project were to not increase the elevation of the roadway and to avoid causing flooding to the neighboring properties from stormwater due to increasing the elevation. Um, and the neighbor has reported flooding to her property due to the increased elevation of the roadway. Um, and upon investigation, we went out there and it does appear that the road is slightly elevated in some areas where they repaved it. And so that would, in effect, be a violation of this order of conditions. But we will require an as-built plan to quantify those differences if they do exist, because just by eye, it does look like there's a small difference, but we can't, it's really difficult to tell. And so we will we'll require an as-built plan. And if they are in violation of these two conditions, then we will have another hearing and discuss what steps they would take, either bringing back, probably bringing back the elevation of the permitted roadway. They also have indicated the engineers um, down Cape, they haven't um, contracted with them yet, but they've indicated they are about four to five months out creating an as-built plan. Um, so they may either need to seek other help for finding a survey plan or they'll have to print the plan until they're able to provide it. Can you say your name for the record? Um, Ivan Kvarle. Are you on the board? That's it. I'm president of the board. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Um, yeah, because I don't, I, this is the first I'm hearing about um, that area creating, letting any, creating, letting or um, um, elevate it too high. That's the first we've heard of anything like that. So, so here's the photo that we received during the flooding on the original proof plan. The elevation of all of the surrounding driveways were the same as the elevation of the roadway. Um, and it's clear in this photo that the elevation of the roadway is higher. Well, that that's not part of this, um, this, um, what was done. That is something that was done back in the 90s where when they um, paved those roads, paved way um, powers made. So that has nothing to do with the expansion of the road that was done in 2018. 2018 was um, on the other side. It started at about um, two powers. I'm in front of 12 powers. We started at four, four feet expansion. Um, around, yeah, it's on the, you know, it went on and it, and it tapered down to zero in the just for the pool area. The house that you showed is in front of the pool area. Um, and that had flooded even before we had to expand the road. We expanded the road is because, um, and, and a lot of the area in that, um, in the community, the front yards are, have extended into the road. We've gone. It coming, we're going back as far as when the when the community was developed back in the forties, um, and then when homeowners started buying the properties and using them as their personal property, um, no one really done anything. They if, if the front yard ran into the road, it, it people did not really take uh, offense with it. But this one owner wanted things property back that was in the road. So that's what um the, that's what started the issue of having to keep the road at a at a adequate width with two lanes, two way traffic. So when he took back his road, um that was at I think it was eleven powers. Um yeah. and we had to we we had to it was twelve feet in front of his house and it needed to be sixteen. A conservation, um, that is what they wanted it to be, 16. So um, the plans that we, down Cape, put, um, did a engineering plan. They came up with different plans um, to expand it. And that is what they came up with. The, to gradually go for four feet in each end, taper down. 
something. And um, so that is where, um, that is what was done in 2018. Um, what is happening in front of 19 powers, uh, which is in front of the pool area, that had, had issues before that expansion. Um, and um, I think that started, um, was something that went in the 90s, they paved the road. And I think they, I wasn't, I wasn't um, um, on the board then, but I think it, it's from that is probably what um, started the, well, not started, but caused maybe, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So it is difficult, but it was, it started that, well, that, that expansion. It was, had nothing to do with that expansion that was done in 2018. The only things that we, we can do, um, this order of conditions is expired anyway, and it does require the closing out with an ASCO plan in order. So, um, that is required either way. Um, to either prove that it is a violation or it is not. And so we do need to see an as-built plan as soon as you can. I understand there are limitations with contractors, but um, this plan does show the elevation of the roadway um, the same as the driveway as it was surveyed at 19. And so if that's the same as the as-built plan shows, then we will take back our violation notice to you and close up the permit. Um, but if it's not, we may need to have some additional discussions. But the as built plan is our next step right for right now. Okay. But that's the same thing as the order of conditions? No, the order of conditions is was the original permit, um, and it has since expired. So you completed the work, that's great before it expired. So now it's expired, so you can't do any additional work. Um, but in order to close that out, and you, you need to file a request for a certificate of compliance. And that step requires the absolute plan, which you need the engineer on board for. Okay, because then this is, you know, where um, he couldn't come to to um, help he understand it. So I'm trying to get a feel of it because we were under the impression that we had to do order of conditions. We had to, um, we had to close that out. And yeah. So they got a uh, proposal from them to close that out. We mean, and um, it doesn't really say anything. It says here the U site plan, um, record order of conditions permit, site visit, instrument survey to update to current conditions as necessary, draft as built site plan. That's it, the as built site plan. And it goes along with the request for certificate of compliance. Okay. So they're, they're, Proposing what we need. Okay. And they have let me know that they cannot do it in a, an extremely timely manner. Um, so we just need to see that as soon as they can provide it. Okay. Okay. So do you need a copy that of the, um, do you need a copy of this? That would be great if you can email me or leave a copy. I have it. Extra. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so does the board have any other comments or questions? And then, and that's built planning. Mm -hmm. We are good. Thank you. I don't need the water on it. Um, we don't generally, you don't have to take outside comment for enforcement hearings, but you can if you'd like to. Outside comment? I don't need it. Does anybody have an objection to uh, taking outside comment? No. Does anybody like to comment on this? Yeah. Hi, my name is Elaine Gambrasio, and I do look at 19 Powers Lane. And when they did this job in 20, it was December of 2018, um, I went to this meeting when they were first granted this condition. And my understanding was they want them to come up as far as they did. And I went out to the pave, I was there when he started paving. And I said, excuse me, it was Don Nadal and Jaden Gunn that was doing it. I said, I have concerns because he started paving over the whole road. He goes, you have good reason to be. He goes, believe me, I'm going to do my best to try to keep the water out of your yard. Well, last winter was a nightmare. I mean, my septic system and my leaching field is in my driveway. Now, this, the water that was puddling in front of the house before the speed 
that's before my driveway was just on the road. It wasn't in the, the neighbor's driveway. All that water has been pushed into my yard, and that's going down the opposite side of it where you see that gray, that gray shaded in area. It's on the opposite side, and it's coming down. And in 2016, I had to put a drain at the foot of my driveway because they had paid, not in the 90s, they had paid, I believe it was 2006, and then they did some more treatment. They said that they were fixing areas on the road. They call it EPS. And in 2016, I had a company come in and put a drain system at the foot of my driveway because the association refused to put a dry well. I showed them. I stood there. I did a video when it rained. I showed them how they're pushing the water into my yard. Their response was, we don't fix other people's property. But they were pushing the water into my yard. I had it surveyed. Um, Mayo, I think it was, said it's three inches above your, you know, they paid three inches above your driveway. I, I was the first one to build down there in 1990. I wasn't allowed to put my septic system in the domes. I had no choice where I had to put it. Um, but anyways, that water now that's coming in, it's coming in, be it's like coming in before the drain because when the drain was put in, they couldn't go all the way to the edge of my driveway because of utilities underneath ground. So I had that company come back out since I was flooding. And he said, we can't drink there because there's utilities there. You can't extend your drain. So it's, it wasn't 1990. They've been paving and they've been repairing the road several times, raising that road. And yes, it's been, it's been flooding, but this is the worst. This is like, those pictures were just from what, three, three and a half, four weeks ago. Um, and it's like, I know I live there year round. I'm a resident here. And this is ongoing, and it's just, it's a nightmare. Well, thank you. I'm sorry for that. So, if somebody, just a question I have for you is that, um, so potentially, because the load of fire that it's supposed to be contributes to the situation. And, and so the as built plan will show you what was intended to go there as opposed to what is there. It will show us what is there currently. What we, in comparison to this permitted plan. It will show what is there. You don't know if, if, if it was done improperly by virtue of that. The ASVIL plan will, will show us if it has been done improperly, which it does appear, like she said, that three or three inches, it is higher than the original roadway. Um, I, I'm not confident in my surveying by eye to require additional work be done based on my visualization of. Oh, would you tell? Yes, so that's why, um, I mean, we can have them come back to a hearing in two months and have them reassess and put pressure on them to find another company to do the as built plan. Because if it is this big of a problem, then maybe it does work, you know, then searching around trying to find someone who can do it sooner, um, because then there might need to be work done to resolve the situation. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think I was out there with you, and uh, it certainly looked higher. Yeah. And uh, in my new eyes, I could see that even better. And um, uh, and and I think it's sad that the uh, that the association isn't taking care of the problem. I think any of it that should be. Uh, I think you should have taken care of the problem when it first arise. Yeah. And uh, if it was your property, you'd want that to be done too, rather than have it ruin your septic and your. Leach mill. I think it's too bad that uh, the association takes the stand and should. I think it should fix it, and I think he should fix it yesterday. So I'm going to keep going through the as built plan. Yeah. The other column? Mm -hmm. I agree with Dave. Dave? So I did. Um, what was issued was a violation notice requiring as built plan by last week. Um, so we would have to vote um, issuing an enforcement order revising the. Due date to be two months to right. Well, that's pretty simple. Next week? I mean, they, they already told me that they're unavailable for four months. So if we want an update. Appreciation is going No, the surveyor. The surveyor. So if we ask for an update in two months, go ahead, Bradford. It's four to five months to be able to. The survey or. Or have it 
it's completed? That's a good question. I don't remember. It drastically changes the timeline. Mm-hmm. And, um, so a clarification on that, but I, I think a two-month update would be yeah. But well, if they can't come out for five months, how are we going to get somebody to do something in two months? Because there are other, all of the companies are all back low. Yeah. I mean, you can take, um, you can take measures now if you believe that it was a, a different than permitted. Um, or you can just provide an update in two months on the progress. Okay, have a progress update. Can if we um can so do have we do have the um the engineering plan that were originally done before they expanded the road. Um and I know that it did it um it is a awful lot of areas in the community that floods a lot because of where we are. Absolutely. And um, so I know that that flooded, you know, so we get water there. And a lot of people got water. And it, uh, they, um, so we are trying to separate um, the which one, for our sake that we're just discussing whether or not this is a violation of the order of condition, not whether whether or not you're causing flooding to your neighbors. Um, that's the only way we can move forward on um, enforcement is if you have a violation of our order of conditions or the wetlands bylaw. And in this case, the elevation was intended to remain the same, and that's just what we're trying to figure out. If the elevation of the roadway had changed, like and changed from and uh, from the 2018 order or a change period, I'm not. That's what I'm trying to clarify. From this plan, if the if the elevations match what was permitted on this rock, okay. If so that had nothing to really do with the with the um, the driveway or the roadway and her driveway, because it did, it's not on that side. But there was an area that over here that looked like it was repaid with her. Within or outside of the conditions of this permit, and that's what we're trying to investigate. We there's like an area of new pavement in this area, in front of um, fifteen and nineteen. It's pretty clear to me that that was paid within the last what? Recently, yeah, six months, maybe less. Something in front of um. I don't have any way of showing you right now, um, but it, in this area behind. The direct shots, kind of think of them. Do you see the little hand and the feet bump on this side of the feet bump? They have brand new pavement, a newish looking pavement that is above the elevation of the existing roadway. Okay. But I don't think we really have any anything else to discuss at the time. Um, just looking for an update. We'll we'll issue a revised um, enforcement order with a new same requirements, but a check in. At the hearing in two months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what does that entail? Or I'm wondering. I'm just trying to make sure I understand, so I can go back to the board and explain it to them. So, what does that in- and actually? Uh, it can be as simple as you coming back saying you pushed and you you shopped around for surveyors and no one is available sooner, um, or with a date. Where the survey will be available that you will provide. Okay. Because we already commissioned, we already hired down Kate. Okay. So, if you could provide. To start taking care of the problem with flooding, is that what you're saying? Um, we are, yeah, to, to take care of this order of conditioning that we. Yeah, okay. for this one. We already hired them. Okay. So they did the other thing. They did, I mean, that we are and everything, and that's how. We need any kind of a um, yeah, just to vote to uh, to revise the um, issue a revised enforcement order. So we need a um, a vote to revise the um, enforcement order. Okay, the details that have to be in that as discussed. As discussed, okay. And have a much of the out of that. That's the most thing did. Perhaps we did. Okay, second. I'll second. Jack, second. 
All in favor? Aye. Passes by the majority. Thank you very much for coming in. Yeah. Okay. You could, um, come back. I have to say, well, I need to be Yeah. We can be in today. Can you stop the class? I am not in the way you need that. Can you have money? Yeah, I'll get the time. Can you just break the email? I got to go for you. Sir. I'll see you quick. What? Key. Yeah, key from the meeting. Well, we can't have to get the black shoe. Yeah, I'm not going to be good here. They come in. We apologize for being between you and that? Lisa, we apologize for being with between you and your dinner tonight. So sorry about that. My daughter I tell you the thing. They was taking us off and did yeah, absolutely. Although he has well, I understand he has you eyes now. He has some work around it and we're gonna take them. We'll get going with the second. No worries. I can start us up. Um um, yeah. um, so this is the Teen Webster. You guys may remember their Teen Webster, um, which is their neighbor to the direction I can't remember. Um, but um, their Teen Webster in the past had um, filled in their yard and put in an extensive gravel and patio landscape, which we then required. Thank you. Thank you. First man. And after the fact, notice of intent for unpermitted work in the flood zone, um, which is similar to the situation we have at 15 Webster. Um, it appears that in the last spring, um, there was unpermitted fill and a retaining wall constructed in the yard, which is also still in the flood zone. Um, and, and due to our current floodplain regulations, that does require permitting. Um, so you're issued a violation notice. Just requiring your attendance today, um, and what I would be recommending is that we issue an enforcement order requiring an after-the-fact notice of intent because the, this work that you've completed does require permitting with our board. Go ahead. So, first of all, please accept my apologies for my lack of knowledge of regarding conservation and floodwaters. This is my first time living in a coastal community. I came from Connecticut and farm country. I had other worries about fertilizer and fields at that time. He purchased this home in the spring of 2022. I was unaware of any restrictions with my project. It was purely a lack of knowledge on my behalf. Uh, I was simply trying to free the property. We have since uh, that work was done. Um, we planted grass, not only on ours, but on the property below where that wall is to provide some absorption there as well. Um, and we'll, we are looking to add some further plantings, and of course, at the board's request, we certainly welcome any advice of what we could put on the property to help mitigate anything that may occur as a result of what we did. Um, my only question is really is what can I do to correct my mistake and learn more about conservation and flood zones as I'm a new resident in a coastal community here in Yarmouth. I will say one good tactic is saving people like me for last because you learn a lot from me. So certain. From what just went on tonight. So, and I, I'm serious about that. So, I had no idea. There, I will tell you, there was a wall. And when I purchased a property, it was old railroad ties, um, hollowed out, falling apart. Um, all I did was bring that out approximately eight feet and fill it in. What we did was we, we removed a lot of trash and debris that was buried inside of that dirt. So, you know, piles of dirt, it was just, just, weird terrain that was there. So our goal was to improve the property and the surroundings. And honestly, our most of our neighbors had liked what we've done uh, to 50 Webster Road since we purchased it. Look at what is the recommendation for um, the... Just due to um, structure the wall and fill in the fund plane, just that an after-the-fact notice of intent be filed. Um, and usually that takes three months to find a surveyor. So that I would recommend that the filing deadline be. And so for you, it would just pretty much be the surveyor completing an as built plan and then providing any additional plantings on the plan um, and any other work that you would want to permit. And for us, our floodplain regulations are uh, you and more than they used to be. So having it's just a requirement that you have this work permitted so we can assess the impacts on the flood zone. 
So I'll be in your stat. And you're like, oh, that boy's shaking. I'm fine. Yeah. Still I'll be, oh, but, yeah. What do I need to do? I mean, I need a surveyor to. Yeah. So filing a notice of intent, you need um, a survey site plan. And that's pretty much the majority of the application is having a survey site plan. And whoever completes that would help you through the notice of intent and represent you at a hearing. I can probably go back to uh, Holmes and Sons, who works in the area, to help me with that. Well, you're not surveying it, so we yeah. survey it. What are they? They're landscapers. They did the work. No, they probably can't help you with this then. Did I just ask if we needed a permit? Yes, I did. Like an existing model? Yeah. yeah. But did you ask? Holmes. Oh, yeah. So, okay. I, I did. I was very specific in asking, do we need a permit? I mean, I, I've always okay. gained permits. So, and they're like, no, you don't. I'm like, okay. So, um, and then, of course, this commenced and number 13 happened. Um, we spoke because we're butters. Uh, with that, so uh, we, now we're here today. Uh, we, I my other question is, how often do you need a map? Do you you have to like zones? Because I like know if being the thirteen impacts what happens to the rest of the neighborhood with what they did in the past and most recently. So FEMA remaps approximately every ten to fifteen years. Okay. They the last map is from twenty fourteen, and um, but there's no news. Yeah. On, on a new floodplain. 2014? Because I thought it was... I think it's 2014. Because when I put my addition on, and, well, it was 2014, now to think about it. Yeah, you're under the new. Okay. So just to clarify, around the wall, any any work on a wall, whether it be an existing wall or a new, brand new one, would need a permit in the flood. You brought in sill in the flood zone. So that's one trigger. Bring in sill. Um, paving where there is not pavement currently, that would be another trigger. Um, or building a structure within the flood pane can sometimes be a trigger depending on what the structure is. So if the structure was already there about three feet off of So you're you're triggered anyway. You brought in sill. I gotcha. So you're changing the elevations. And for any future in the future I would just get in touch with the conservation. Yeah, I will. I, mean, I will. Here's what we think we're doing at these things. Honestly, personally, I didn't even th- I think of the flood, so flood zone. So, okay. All right. Any recommendation on plantings? Is grass sod uh, enough? Or I'm happy to send you recommendations, and I can also send you um, could often surveys plans that are sent to us. Okay. Not a recommendation of a person, but people who file with the town often enough that they are surveyors. Okay. okay. We need a motion for an enforcement order to be issued. Okay, does that? Okay. Second. Hey, all in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank you. I think Bradford ha- should have his first motion framed. Then you're on the ball. Oh, you need thank-, thank you all. Have a great night. Many he doesn't know. Yeah. But I can already. Yeah. It's it. Been- Got to learn to eat a late dinner, an early dinner, or a late dinner. Had a little snack before I can. Here. That took the. It jumped to right. Had to the sign in again. I put mine down. With the sign in again. I don't know. No, I have this with Webster Rose. They do. Yeah, I put some women. Went through, which he used to finish her up. Then I was on. Oh, kind of good. Why didn't the team dance to me? Yeah. I'll ask her in a second. And she felt no one let anybody go anywhere. I think we're kind of like we're back to being so I'll keep quite tight. Okay. Two years. Next um, item. Thank you, Allison. Meeting minutes, September 5th, 2024. I read the minutes. They seem fine, so I make a motion to accept. Second. Wait. Right for you one here, right? Right. Good luck, Jen. You're awesome. Yeah, you were here on Zoom. But, um, so. I made the changes that you left. I, 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 they like two little Dana changes. Audience, and okay, and then um, update so we'll hook up again. So, yeah, um, did you get these out for me? They were in the packet. Yeah. Mm. So, okay, so I received this from one of the uh, state reps, <laughs> Mr. Flanagan. Uh, he had mentioned in a meeting I was at that uh, the new state budget had. Uh, had this section in it in which, if you read it, uh, people will get you know, a tax credit. Um, I'm a little confused. I'm actually meeting with him Saturday, so I'm going to ask the question. I'm a little confused where it says, 
shall be the actual cost to taxpayer of $30,000, which is ever less. And then it talks about a macro of 18000 So I'm not sure because I'm not a lawyer what all that means. But I think the bottom line is um, people who spend uh, money will be able to uh, get a tax credit not to exceed $4,000 a tax year. So if he's would spend, so I can do this easy math, $16,000, you would get four years of $4,000 credit if you are um, obviously paid taxes worth that much. So in other words, someone like me, they always a te- from the teacher, I don't pay a state tax, I could be able to get Social Security, and my state tax bill is very little, mm-hmm. and you too, right? And so I would get back for you too. Yeah. So I would get back very little, but I get back something. But if you're, you know, someone who is, who is me down here and I put age, let's say, um, and he puts out $60,000, certainly pre state tax, we would get a $4,000 credit. So it's, it's for prime, prime, primary, um, residents only. So people who own the second house down here would not get the credit. Um, and I don't, you know, someone asked me at the commission meeting, this is pro- when I brought this to the uh, wastewater advisory council, someone asked about that. And I said, I just assumed the state didn't want you to double dip, you know, because if, if let's say you live in, uh, in East and Western Mass, and so you have to put a new septic in, um, this also include people who need to put new septics in. So, um but there is a credit. It's to me. I think it's nice that we should know that. I am working with the wastewater people to get that weird out. I talked to two selectmen over the last week, and they're excited by this too. And I don't know. I'm meeting with Senator Sear and Representative Deeds and Representative Hannigan on Saturday at a different meeting. I'm going to bring this up again. I just wanted you guys to know. Yeah, I could. That was good news personally. Okay. Um, David, the last item is a regulation update. Yeah, so our um, bylaw that was approved at town meeting in the spring has been approved by the Attorney General. And so that means we need to post some regulations to support it. And they are in the works. You pretty much mostly all reviewed them, except for Godfrey. So we'll get him to review them first. Um, but we're hoping to have them posted next week for a three week. So to have them available online for three weeks before our next, uh, the hopeful meeting that we'll have on October 17th, where we'll have a public hearing um, during our regularly scheduled meeting. Hopefully it'll be a light day so we can have a good discussion on those regulations to support our bylaw that's been approved. I just have two other, are there any comments about that? Uh, but that, before you make another comment about something else, I want to say I went to you know, um, Brittany's walk last week. And it was excellent. It was pretty well attended. Yeah, thank you. Good things about the previous walk, which I did you go to. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I appreciate, we all appreciate the work you put in for that. Yeah, our, so we had a new guided walk series by me. Um, our first walk was at Tandy Pond. We had 20 attendees. And our second walk was at um, Cirilla Conservation Area. There were 10 attendees. And we're going to have one in the near future. We're working um, with the Historical Society to see if we can use our trails um, behind the post office in Yarmouth Port. Um, but we're hoping to do one at Calorie Darling. Um, but the parking is a limiting factor at our other conservation areas. So we're working on other locations. Bus. But, um, but just two other quick announcements. There is a walk through um, at Chasebrook Park at 10 a.m. on Monday to talk about the new park there. Um, from, it's from the library, but um, Karen, Nate, and I, who are the, Nate is the primary project manager. He'll be walking us through the park um, progress and plans. And there's also, on October... They would, they would Monday at what time? Monday at 10, at Chasebrook Park. And then on October 4th, um, there's an environmental funding announcement. So we I recently received a SNAP award, which is the Southeast New England Program Watershed Implementation Grant um, for $34,000 for the Chase Brook Park project. And we were selected to be the, um, the host for the award ceremony. So two other areas in Massachusetts were awarded um, for projects. And 
Representative Bill Keating will be joined by other federal, state, and local partners to announce the funding that has been awarded, and our project will be highlighted. So that will be very exciting. So it's at 11.30, rain or shine, October 4th. That's all I did. Is there any effect on the shape to develop that park? Yes. So the money was awarded for all aspects of construction um, relative, rele, uh, relevant to water quality improvement. So it does exclude the construction of the pedestrian bridge. So we are seeking additional funding through the CPC program, the capital budget program, um, and the tourism um, preservation fund and other state and federal grants. Which is the bridge? The total budget for the for the bridge. Me? Right, Dave. I think it's about $450,000 for just the bridge. I usually I try to ask questions go to the end. Mm-hmm. The bridge is a large portion of the cost of the project, so that's why we do still need to seek additional funding. The big bridge, then? Um, yeah, 20 foot span. Okay. Okay. Anything else? That's all. Thank you. Okay. I have a couple of things here, and I'm not sure if we. We missed that again, but we want to check before you leave. That would be better to kind of make that a little more of the two things we, or maybe what we were to, and maybe get help. I think we have to find Webster. Webster, we signed. Yep. We did at the rep time. We need to sign. That was signed now. And uh, what about the other one is the way to the pilot plan? Yes, we, do, we need that one as well. And what this is? That one we don't need. That's a complete. All right. Okay, so you have all this signed, that'd be great. Thank you. And uh well, it's kind of some minimal. That's been down. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye.